من الكتاب والسنة واتباع السلف الصالح بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى من تبع هداهم إلى يوم الدين Indeed, all praise is due to Allah and my peace and blessings be upon his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The golden principles in Islam. Chosen this topic for the very first time to be conveyed and I hope inshallah that Allah will benefit through it. And I thought I would talk about something that would help the callers for the sake of Allah, the dua, in order to call the people to Islam. So, to show them that Islam is an easy-going religion. Islam is something that would facilitate the entrance to it. Islam is based upon ease, not hardship. It's based upon giving glad tidings, not repelling the people. It's based upon cooperation and not to be uh, putting your back or showing your back to your brother. This is based upon a hadith which is being given to us in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, one of the great companions. He said that when the Prophet ﷺ sent him along with Mu'adh ibn Jabal to Yemen, he gave them this last final admonishing, gave them like a recommendation and a commandment. So he said to them, Yassira wa la tu'assira. Yassira, make things easy. Wala tu'assira, do not make things difficult. Bashira, wala tunaffira. Give glad tidings, do not repel. And then tata'wa'a wala takhtalifa, cooperate with one another and do not diverge or split. So this is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showing us that the da'wah is very important and he had said to us a number of things as we're going to see in this very simple short hadith and showed us as well how concerned he is regarding the da'wah. Because before this instructions he gave them, he said to Mu'adh, when you go there, you're going to come to people who are the people of the book. Let the first thing to be said to them, La ilaha illallah. But I'm not concerned about the, those things that the Prophet told him what to say because the people of the book. I'm concerned about we as dua, what we need to do in order to make sure that our da'wah is successful. First, you can see the Prophet how concerned he is from a number of occasions. If we look, for example, at the time when the Prophet of Allah in the year three after Hijrah, in the month of Shawwal, one year and a month after the victory of the Battle of Badr, that the companions had lost 70 martyrs. So the Prophet of Allah lost 70 martyrs, amongst them the best uncle to his heart, and that is Uncle Hamza radiallahu anhu wa arda. Then, within less than a month or so, the tribe of Al-Qara and the tribe of Abal, they send to the Prophet of Allah, they want people to teach them Islam. And then the Prophet of Allah straight away, without any hesitation, he sends 10 people, led by Asab ibn Thabit, along with them, Khubayb ibn Adi and Abdullah ibn Tariq and Zayd ibn Dathina radiallahu anhu al-jami'ah and those people had actually laid an ambush for them to cut the story short or all of them were killed radiallahu anhu arda all of them were killed it's a fascinating story but this is not the story I'm trying here to narrate because of the time I've got a lot of things ahead of me to talk about so Prophet of Allah he lost now already 70 in the battle of Uhud 10 and this is called Na'sat al Rajiyah. Al Rajiyah is a place, a high mountain. They went to it, Al Rajiyah. Then, less than a month, the Banu Ri'il and Bikwan and Usayyah and Banu Lahyan, these are four tribes. They sent to the Prophet of Allah saying that we are, you know, we want people to teach us about the deen and the Islam. Again, there's all of it treachery. So, the Prophet of Allah, without any hesitation, to show you his consent to the da'wah, he sends 70 Anas radiallahu anhum, he called them Qurra. They were called Qurra, the reciters. The reason why they're called the Qurra, that these 
70, they used to be in the masjid reciting late night. And in the morning after Fajr, they would bring water and fetch it to the masjid to those people called Ahlul Sufa, people who are financially skinned, got nowhere, no shelter. So, and then after that, they go and harvest some wood, then they sell the wood in the market and they bring food with that money to give it to those people who are Ahlul Sufa. So, those people are special, called Al Qurra. 70, and they went all the way to those tribes. Again, there was uh, lying in ambush. Amr ibn Tufayl, this kafir man, when the uh, 70s, they sent a representative of theirs to them, to him. He had betrayed them, and he had killed him without him knowing. And that guy, the person, he said, Allahu Akbar, fuzdu wa rabbu al-Kaaba. Allahu Akbar, I have won by the Lord of al-Kaaba, won Jannah. And then they surrounded them. Again, the arsh showered them with arrows and they killed all of them except for one who managed to fled, to run away and tell the Prophet of Allah what happened. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so saddened by this incident. It's called the incident of Bi'r Ma'una, the will of Ma'una. And he was so saddened that Anas Sallallahu Alaihi said the Prophet of Allah kept for one month making dua against those people. Allahumma al'an bik ri'l, Allahumma al'an bik wan, Allahumma al'an... Usayyah, Asaw, Allahumma al'an banu lihyan, kept cursing for a month. Not only Anas, Anas, he said, also we have recited the Qur'an regarding those 70, 70 reciters who were killed. We're reciting Qur'an which abrogated, was abrogated later on. The Qur'an says as follows, بَلِّغُوا عَنَّا قَوْمَنَا أَنَّا قَدْ لَقِيْنَا رَبَّنَا فَرَضِيَا عَنَّا وَأَرْضَانَا This was a verse, and then later on it was abrogated. This verse... It was just being sent because of those 70 companions, reciters, were killed. So, Prophet of Allah, within two months, he had lost 150 for the sake of the Dawah. So, all of that to show you that this deen and this Quran had reached you through the skulls of the companions and through the blood of the companions. And yet, we find people there themselves to insult those companions. So the da'wah, it needs sacrificial. You can't just make no sacrifice, whether it's the sacrificial of the body or the time or sacrificial of the money and the wealth. It has to be a sacrifice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said to us, أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَنْ تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةِ وَلَمَّا يَعْلِمُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا مِنْكُمْ وَيَعْلَمُ الصَّابِرِينَ Are you going to think that you're going to enter paradise without Allah azza wa jal testing you? They have to test you. It's a sacrifice. And Allah will, not want, will know from you who is the true mujahid and who is the one who is patient. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in Surah Al-Baqarah, أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَنْ تَدْخُرُوا الْجَنَّةَ لَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ مَا آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا you're going to enter paradise. And yet, the example of those who were before you does not come to you. The example of those who have been tested, the ba'sa, poverty, barra, ailments, and hardship. And they've been shaken until the messengers himself and the ones who believed along with him, they said, when is the victory? When is the help of Allah is going to come? Ala inna nasrallahi qareeb. Ala inna nasrallahi qareeb. Verily, the victory and the help of Allah is close. Prophet Sallallahu in this hadith, he had sent Mu'ad and Abu Musa al-Ash'ar. He sent a people who are knowledgeable, not people who are ignorant. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, he said to us, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Know for knowledge, there's no, there's no God worthy of worship except for Allah alone. So we have to have the knowledge. And also Allah's Messenger, he said, told us regarding the ayah, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنَ اتَّبَعْنِي أَنَا وَنِي اتَّبَعْنِي قُلْ هَذِهِ Say to them, O Muhammad, this is my path. أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ According to Allah, عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ Upon knowledge. أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعْنِي وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Me and the ones who are following me. So we are upon the knowledge. Any da'wah without knowledge is destructive. One day, companions, along with the man, they were in the desert. And one of them had a wet dream, so he wanted to pray the Fajr, so he had to make a wash. The water is cold, he's got a wound in his head. So he's wounded in his head, and he had a wet dream, and now he wants to make a purification. So he went to his friends, ignorant. 
You think I could really use dry evolution, thermal? No, no, no. The water is there. You have to use it. So if you use the water, he bathed himself or showered himself. The water went to the wound and he was, dead, you know, sort of affected by it and he died. Prophet of Allah knew about this. He said, they killed him. May Allah kill them. إِنَّمَا شِفَاءُ سؤال. Verily, the cure of the disease, which is the ignorance, is to ask. So just ask. It will be enough for him just to so strike his hands on the land, wipe his face and wipe his hand. So this ignorance resulted into the death of this person. So we need to make sure that we have to make the da'wah upon knowledge. It's not just teach them the method and the way to call to Allah, yet you did not equip them with the weapon, which is the knowledge itself. They're going to call to Allah for what? What is it? What is it? There are some uh, uh, charities, <coughs> well-known charities. I talked to the one who's in head of them. They were making these courses, how to make da'wah, coming to the masajid or making the places, the halls and all of that. And they're teaching people how to make da'wah. And then later on, I kept telling them, this is right, wrong. And now the head of the charity says to me, you're right. We've been teaching them to do a da'wah, but they don't know anything. They don't know knowledge. Teach them al-usul al-thalatha. Teach them kashf al-shubuhat. Teach them some foundation to understand how to be immunized against these bid'ah and against these, all of this venom which is spreading around. You can't just throw them there and just go make da'wah. <coughs> so you have to know that jahl, ignorance, is an enemy of us. As our Shaykh al used to say, al-jahl bid'ah fi hadin ummah. Jahl is bid'ah, innovation. As any person who's trying to push into the public some stories regarding the virtues of ignorance, <laughs> that's, you know, this is bizarre. I've heard one of the stories, it says that one man, he was worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal on a particular island. Remember, this is the fake story, but it's been mentioned. And this person, whenever he prays, he doesn't know how to pray the proper prayer. So he puts his, down his cloak, abaa, and then he puts his staff, you know, the stick next to it, and then he's got his goat. Then he says, Oh Lord, Aba'ati, Asati, Anzati, Taqabbal Salati. Oh Lord, my cloak, my staff, and my goat, accept my prayer. Is this table stable? Are you sure this table is stable? <laughs> it looks like it's khair, <laughs> inshallah. Not to be careful now. Right, so he was putting that and he was calling till one day a scholar comes from the middle of the ocean with a boat and then he comes to this island and he sees this man he said what are you doing he said I'm praying he said this is not correct prayer so he teaches him the correct prayer he teaches him how Asr, Maghrib, Isha and then he didn't stay for a long time remember there's a fake story please and off he goes back he wants to go to wherever he wants to go got the boat he is now about a mile away from the uh, from the beach this man he wants to pray the prayer that he's been taught he puts his cloak and then he forgets the prayer. He comes back again to the same old prayer. It's autopilot. My, O oh Lord, my stick, my goat, my cloak, except my prayer. Oh, I forgot the prayer. Let me go and ask him. He's there. He's got no boat. So he started going towards him. And he started walking on top of the sea. Until he reached that knowledgeable man. He said, scholar, please. I forgot the prayer that you taught me. The scholar is looking at him. He's got no boat. He's on top of the sea like this. He said, go back to your old prayer. I don't think my prayer will make you walk over the sea. So this story is being said to support ignorance. Ignorance. How can ignorance make you walk on top of the water? A'udhu Billah. Coming back again. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari is a scholar. He used to recite the Quran in such a way that the Prophet of Allah, one day he said, this man has got a flute from the flutes of Al-Dawud. Nazmar and Mazamir Dawud. You know, Dawood, when you see talk, even the mountains and the birds and everything used to sing along with him, how beautiful he was. So he's got one flute of the flutes of the... He said, Messenger of Allah, if I heard, if I knew that you were listening to me, I would have made it even better. Whenever he recites in the masjid, the wives of the Prophet of Allah, they start listening to his recitation, how beautiful he was. So Abu Musa al-Ash'ari is a well-known, beautiful reciter. As for Mu'adh ibn Jabal, he's a scholar. Mu'adh ibn Jabal, he's one of the four whom the Prophet of Allah, he said... Take the Quran from four. Mu'adh ibn Jabal is one of them. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and Ubay ibn Ka'b and Salim, Mawla Abi Hudayfa. Those are the four whom the Prophet Allah asked us to take Quran from. So Mu'adh ibn Jabal is a great man and great reciter. 
Mu'adh ibn Jabal is the one whom the Prophet of Allah, when he told him to go to Yemen, he was walking with him. <coughs> Mu'adh on the camel, Prophet of Allah is underneath him. Look at that. Respecting the scholar, and the Prophet of Allah, he said, Oh Mu'adh, maybe you're going to come back again, you're, gonna see me. you're not going to see me here. And that's when Mu'adh started crying. Because here the Prophet of Allah gave a hint that he's going to die. And actually he died. Mu'adh did not see him. Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhum, Hakib ibn Hizam, one of the scholars, one of, sorry, of the traders of the companions, was an old man. He was 76, seeking knowledge with somebody who was 34 years younger than him, taking the tether of his camel and pulling it. Hakim, you're pulling the guy of a chap here. He said, yes, he's a scholar. And the scholar has to be looked at with reverence. Subhanallah. So Mu'adh ibn Jabal, and Abu Musa, whom the Prophet of Allah sent them to Yemen. And Yemen is full of Muslims and more Christians. And he gave them some instructions in order for this da'wah, for this call to the sake of Allah to be successful. First commandment, yassira wa la tu'assira. Make things easy. Do not make things difficult. So that means when you want to show the people about Islam, show the Islam as to be something easy. There is no hardship in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talked to us about the verses of Siyam in Surah Al-Baqarah, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامِ أَيُّوَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ قَبْلِكُمْ شَهْرُ مَضَى الَّذِي أُنزِرَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ To the end, and then he said, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرُ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرُ He ended the verses of fasting, that Allah intends ease with you. He does not intend hardship. So when he made the fasting, he did not make it as a hardship for, for you. For verily, <coughs> it's fasting within your capability. <coughs> okay, but we're going to see that Islam is ease. Even he had made the other fast upon you compulsory. He said if you are ill, then you compensate on other days. If you are a traveler, compensate on, compensate on other days. If you are an old man, if you are a, a breastfeeding woman, a pregnant woman, go and give Sadaqah for each day that you break the fast. So there's an ease here. So it's not difficult. You have to fast. So if you can't fast because of a genuine reason, there's an ease here. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ Allah did not put any hardship onto you in Islam. There's no hardship. So a deen, our deen is deen of ease. It's not deen of hardship. Whether it is in the aqidah or whether it is in the ahkam. And this is very important for the da'iyah to know this. Here the Prophet of Allah Wasallam, when he came to the Medina and he saw the people they're playing in two days. He said, what are these two days? He said, Messenger of Allah, these are the two days like Eid for us. So the Prophet Wasallam, he said, قَدْ أَبْدَلَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِهِمَا خَيْرًا مِنْهُمَا Allah had exchanged these two days for better two days than them. And that is Eid al-Fitr wa Eid al-Adha. The day of al-Fitr and the day of al-Adha. These are two days. And then he said, وَلِتَعْلَمْ يَهُودُ الْمَدِينَةِ The Jews were surrounding the Medina. Let the Jews of the Medina. أَنَّنِي بُعِثْتُ بِالْحَنِفِيَةِ السَّمْحَةِ I was sent by the easy-going religion. وَأَنَّ فِي دِينِنَا فُسْحَةِ and our religion has got some space in it. Look, we've got Eid, got people to go and, you know, jump up and down and to make this just like in the doof. All of that is permissible in the Eid. Let the Jews know that it's not, Eid. It's not our strict religion. No, so religion has got space in it. Deen, which is deen based upon ease. Yes, sira, wala tu sira. Now, the Iman, if we look at it, you believe in Allah and you believe in His angels and you believe in His books, you believe in the prophets. You believe in the last days and you believe in the Qadr, which is the decree, the good of it and the bad of it. So those are the, the six pillars of Iman. Again, Allah, angels, books, prophets, and the day of judgment and Al-Qadr, Khairihi wa Shar. These are the six pillars of Iman. Simple, there's no complication about them. Those are the, so you have to understand there is no Hardship to learn them. There is no sort of complication about them. And it is actually goes along with your fitrah. Your only the, 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 the correct and healthy brains will accept it. Unhealthy brains will accept it. Very easy going. Then Islam. Islam, shahadatan. Two testimonies. As-salah, as-siyam, as-zakah, al-hajj. All of that as well from the Islam. And look. Now you're talking about the Salah. The Salah is compulsory. Five daily prayers. They are maybe one hour, all of them, 
in what? 24 hours. In the day, in the night, 24 hours. One hour you give for the whole five daily prayers. One hour. That's it. And also, it is conditioned for the prayer to be accepted that you have to have wudu. I can't have wudu because of axima, because the water is not there. There is an easy going religion. If the person is now, he's compulsory upon him to stand up in the prayer, the obligatory. I'm not able. Sit down. I'm not able on your side. I'm not able on your back. Easy coming religion. All of that because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are to face the Qibla, I can't know the Qibla. I mean, there's no, there's no Muslim. You tell me what the Qibla. Strive. Where's the Qibla? Allah Azza wa Jalla said, ma tuwallu Allah. Wherever you say, wherever you go, Allah Azza wa Jalla is there. Don't worry. So make the, your striving, make your ishtihan, make your Qibla direction. If you have prayed towards the direction, which is not the Qibla, and then realize at the same time, in the same time of the prayer, that it is not correct, your prayer is correct. You don't have to repeat it again. So after I finish my dhuhr, facing Egypt, not Qibla for example, then after the prayer is finished, I've realized I'm wrong, I'm still time for the dhuhr prayer, you know, plenty of time until Asr, I don't have to repeat it. That's an easy going religion. Zakah. Few pennies, 2.5% upon the rich person who is reaching the Nisab. He's got more than 4,500 pounds and it stays for one year. Okay, and then if he stays for one, th- at least at least a minimum of that threshold, then 2.5%. What is 2.5%? 25 pounds every thousand. What is that going to affect you? What an easygoing religion. Fasting, the same thing. Hajj. Hajj, ikhwani, the hajj as well. He who is capable to make hajj, then he makes the hajj. So he who does this, he will enter paradise. Anas radiallahu anhu, he said, we were sort of, uh, liking and amazed when a Bedouin man, common sense is got, comes and asks the Prophet of Allah. So we were waiting all the time for a Bedouin man because they dared themselves to ask the Prophet of Allah questions that we don't ask. The companions are shy to ask the Prophet of Allah. But they need somebody who's got common sense. Somebody from the Bedouins who knows what, he, you know, what to ask. So this person came to the Prophet of Allah. He said, Oh Muhammad, you're not messenger of Allah. Oh Muhammad, your messenger. The Prophet of Allah sent him a messenger, a representative. Came to us and he claimed that God, Allah, had sent you. Is that correct? So the Prophet said, Is correct. Who created the earth? So the Prophet said, Allah. Who created the heavens? Prophet said, Allah. Who erected the mountains? Prophet said, Allah. So the man he said, By the one who created the earth and the heaven and erected the mountains, did Allah send you a true messenger? He said, yes. So your messenger, your representative, claimed that Allah commanded you to make us pray five daily prayers in the day and the night. Is that correct? The person said, it's correct. By the one who had sent you. Did Allah command you with this? He said, yes. Also, your messenger had claimed that we have to pay zakah in our money. Did Allah send you with this? He said, yes. Allah, he said, yes. And also... Your representative had sent claimed that we had to fast the month of Ramadan. Is that true? True. By the one who sent you. Allah, Allah commanded you with this. He said, yes. Same thing with the Hajj. Then the man, he said, by the one who sent you with the truth. By Allah. I will not add to this, nor dec- decrease. I'm not going to add to these five daily prayers. No voluntary. Ramadan, no voluntary. Just the zakah, no sadaqah voluntary. Just the Hajj, no voluntary. I'm not going to add to this. I'm not going to decrease as well. Then he left. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, if he's to say and abide with what he said, he will enter paradise. This is Islam, ya khwani. So easy going, going, even the nomadic. This Bedouin man came from the desert, understood it. So it is incumbent upon those people who are calling for the sake of Allah to know this fact that this religion is a religion which is easy. And they should represent it as an easy religion, not to complicate it, so that the people accept it, so the people enter Islam, and their role model, and the highest example for them is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Prophet of Allah, he used to leave things and actions which is more lovable to him to do it. Why? Because he's scared, he's fearing that the people will imitate him, and then it becomes compulsory. So the Prophet of Allah, he would leave things that he wants to do, he loves to do it from the ibadah, but he thinks he's scared. If he does them, he leaves them. Why? Because maybe the people will imitate him and Allah will make it compulsory. So, for example, the Taraweeh prayer. Prophet 
One night he came out on the 23rd night of Ramadan. For the first time, after he had finished his Isha, he went out and he made his Witr prayer, which they call it Taraweeh, outside in the masjid. People saw him, they prayed. 24th did not come out. 25th, lots of people. Everybody's telling the other, you know, you should have known, you should have seen that prayer. 23rd, 25th, more people. 26th, didn't come out. 27th, a ah, lot, a lot of people. Companions knew the pattern now. 28th is not going to come out. 29th, he came out. The masjid is full and people outside. But the Prophet did not come out. On the 29th, did not come out. Some of those companions went to Islam just recently. They held some pebbles. That's the masjid carpet, but there were some pebbles there. They held some pebbles and they threw it on the door of the Prophet of Allah because it's in the masjid. Maybe they think that the Prophet of Allah is asleep because he prayed the Isha and he went inside. But there's a noise, buzzing noise in the masjid. And there's no sort of soundproof windows there at that time. And everything can, can be heard. So the Prophet of Allah, he left them until Fajr. They stayed until Fajr. And then he prayed the Fajr. Then he addressed them. He said, I knew what happened last night. But I, I was afraid that it would become compulsory upon me. If you kept praying it, it will become compulsory. Prophet Sallallahu he said, had it been, I'm going to make it difficult on my ummah, I would have commanded them to make siwak every wudu. Siwak every salah. It would have been command. But Alhamdulillah, it's not a command. It's a recommendation. Prophet of Allah, one day he had delayed the Isha until the people in the masjid slept. Then he said, verily, Wallahi, this is the right time for the Isha. But I'm afraid I'm going to make it difficult for the people. That means late night. But he, that's why he's telling us to make it early, because we don't want to make it difficult to the people. The Prophet ﷺ used to be patient, easygoing, regarding those who are ignorant. For example, that man who came to urinate in the masjid, and the companions were about to beat him up. And rightly so, he was actually rooted in the masjid. But the Prophet of Allah said, what are you doing? Now imagine the Bedouin man is urinating, and these guys are going to come and kill him, or beat him up, and the Prophet of Allah, whom he doesn't know him, he doesn't know he's a prophet or something, he, just says, he says to them something, and everybody adhere to the command. Leave him. Let him urinate. Don't push him. Ah, subhanallah. لا تزرموا. دعوه يكمن بولته. Then he called them. إِنَّ بُعِثْتُ مُيَسِّرِينَ وَلَمْ تُبْعَثُ مُعَسِّرِينَ You've been sent to make it easy for the people, not to make it difficult to the people. It's enough for you, after he finishes, to put what? Water. Because it's already urinating. He's already done it. And when you stop urination, you know, while you're doing it, it might, you know, cause some sort of, you know, infection for you. Let him. And then you bring water and you khalas. That's it. You purify it. That Bedouin man is so happy with this man, the Prophet of Allah. So he came to the Prophet of Allah and said, Allahumma arhamni ana wa muhammada wa la tarhamna ana ahada. O oh Lord, give us mercy. Just me and Muhammad, nobody else. No, these ones are harsh, hard huh, on me. So the Prophet of Allah, then he smiled and he said, you have limited the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jalla. You could see here how the Prophet Sallallahu acted with this ignorant man. One day the Prophet of Allah is with Anas. This Bidwin man comes and takes the collar of the Prophet like this and he pulls him on his neck like this. Imagine, he's the head of the state. He says to him, أَعْطِنِي مِمَّا أَعْطَكَ اللَّهِ Give me from what Allah has given you. He talks about the sadaqat of the zakah. People give the zakah. So the Prophet of Allah smiles. Wallahi, Anas, he said, I could see the mark of the collar of the Prophet of Allah giving a mark on the scar onto the Prophet Sallallahu neck. So he said to him, Anas, give him. That's the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Mu'ayyad al-Hakam al-Sulami. A person who just embraced Islam. Radiyallahu anhu wa rda. He had learned before he embraced Islam that as soon as a person sneezes, he would say to him, Ya Allah. But we as Muslims, we have learned, we can't say to a person who sneezes, Ya Allah, until he says what? Alhamdulillah. He says, Alhamdulillah. We say to him what? Ya Allah. But he doesn't know this. And he didn't know as well in the prayer, you're not supposed to talk to the people. So he joined the prayer. It may be the first, second time. He doesn't know. One companion, not far away from him, he sneezes. So he says to him, Ya Allah. You know what he's praying? Ya Allah. Companions looked at him. While he prays, looked at him. He said, why are you looking at me? May my mother lose me. He's still talking. May my mother lose me. What are, what's wrong? Huh? Why are you looking at me? So the companions started tapping on their uh, arms, sitting to quiet. He, he was scared. He went quiet. When the prayer is finished now, he is awaiting for his punishment now. So the Prophet Allah calls him. So he came and he is really shaken. So when he sat down, he saw that this man, the Prophet Sallallahu is a different man. He's I'm outside this world. The Prophet Sallallahu is so easy going with him. So he said, 
by the one who sent him with the truth. He did not yell at me. He did not tell me off. He just said to me, Dear son, this prayer is not fit for the speech of the people. It's only for adhkar, for Qur'an, for dua, supplication. That's why he loved the Prophet sallallahu That's how the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Messenger of Allah, he will be harsh upon the person who is harsh with the people. Or he makes it difficult upon the people. Remember here, Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Mu'ad ibn Jabal, we said the scholar. Mu'ad ibn Jabal, he used to be a recital of the Quran. And his people were far away from the masjid. So he used to pray the Isha with the Prophet, he's obligatory. And his people, because they're far from the masjid of the Prophet, they wait for him until he comes to them and lead them in the prayer. So he's now praying voluntary, while the people praying behind what? Obligatory. But they don't want to swap anybody. Mu'ad ibn Jabal. And Mu'ad ibn Jabal, whatever he recites for them, they accept it. And Mu'ad ibn Jabal is half ill. So he starts praying with Al-Baqarah. There's a boy, Ghulam, boy, just a teenager. He's a person who's assigned to a very hard job. What is it? He does give water to the camels and you have to set up early in the morning as well. Very hard job, before even Fajr. He saw this prayer. He doesn't know anything about Quran. But he started, Mu'ad ibn Jabal, reciting, reciting. So he said, it's too much. So what he did, he had intended to depart today from them. So he said, Allahu Akbar, mid rukur. I'll make Sami Allah and Muhammad, sujood, first rak'ah, second rak'ah, maybe Mu'ad still in the first rak'ah. Um, finished the prayer, and he left the masjid. While the Mu'ad ibn Jabal is in his first rak'ah, after the prayer is finished, the people started, what a hypocrite man, what a hypocrite boy. So they went to Mu'ad, you know what he did? Oh, he did this, he's a hypocrite. Munafiq. So when the boy was told that the people said this and Mu'ad ibn Jabal said this, he said, I'm going to complain to the Prophet. So he went to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he went to the Prophet, subhanAllah, the qadr was that the Mu'ad ibn Jabal was at the same time coming to the Prophet. So when he told him, Messenger of Allah, you know, I'm not saying anything wrong with the Mu'ad, but he comes to pray with you, then later he comes and he's already late and he starts something. And I don't know what he says. And I don't know your dan 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 nor his dan dan dan. Sounds for him the Fatiha and those well, duas and everything. You know, Chinese. Din 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 din. He said dan 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 and his dan dan. I don't understand. His dan 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 nor your dan 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 dan. I only say in the prayer, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah. That's it. No Fatiha. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah. Don't worry, Prophet. Our dan dan like your dan dan. Chinese is same as Chinese. Don't worry. Same thing. Said Messenger of Allah. And he reads. I don't know. He reads up. It's long. And we are people workers. We work very late. And he looked at Mu'ad. He didn't even ask whether he's right or wrong. Afattanun anta ya Mu'ad. Afattanun, are you a troublemaker? Are you trying to make the people in hardship here? You're putting this person in hardship and it's one person against whom the whole of the masjid. Because all of the others did not complain. No complaint, except for this boy. And then he said to him, just recite short surahs. Huh? Don't show your muscles and recite long surahs. Huh? Short surahs. That's how the Prophet of Allah, he said to him, three people came to the wines of the Prophet of Allah. And they've asked about the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's ibadah, worship. How does he worship Allah? They told him. When they told him, he said, oh, it's not a big ibadah. But what, anyway, he doesn't need a big ibadah. Because whom? A Prophet of Allah, his past and future sins have been forgiven. But we need to make a big ibadah. So they made it difficult. And they made us now a role model for other people. One of them, he said, I don't sleep, I pray all night. One of them, he said, I fast all the year. I don't break my fast. And the third one, he said, I don't marry women. When the Prophet of Allah knew about this, he ascended the pulpit and the rest of the people. He said, I've heard such and such and such. Verily, I am more fearing of Allah than any one of you. I've got piety more than any one of you. But I marry women. And I sleep and I fast. I pray. And I fast and I break my fast. And he who does choose other than my sunnah, other than my way, he is not from me. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As. Radiyallahu anhu. A person who is well known with ibadah. is being came to the knowledge of the Prophet of Allah that he had said, By Allah, I'm going to fast all days and I'm going to pray all nights. So he summoned Abdullah ibn Amr al-As. Did you say this? He said, Bay, My sacrifice, my father and my mother, O Messenger of Allah, yes, have said it. He said, You can't do this. Okay, well, the best of the, the, best of the, the best of things to do is to pray and to sleep and to fast and break your fast. So, hasana is ten times it like. So, if you fast three days of the month, it's like you fast in the whole month. Messenger of Allah, I could do better. 
Okay, well, fast two days and break two days. I could do better. I can, I'm able to do better than this. Okay, fast a day, break two days. I could do better. Okay, fast a day, break the following day. I could do better. He said, no, there is nothing better. This is the fast of Dawood, alayhi salam. There's nothing more than this. So, fasting a day, breaking the following day. And as for sleeping, sometimes you sleep, sometimes you pray. Prophet of Allah, sometimes he prays so much that they say that he doesn't sleep. Sometimes he sleeps so much, they say that he doesn't pray. Between this and that. This is how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had told him. Now we come to the second admonishing of the Prophet of Allah, the commandment to Mu'adh and to Abu Musa when he said, وَبَشِّرَا وَلَا تُنَفِّرَا Give glad tidings. Do not repel the people. Do not make the people sort of hate your religion. Hate your da'wah. Bashir, give glad tidings. Give glad tidings to, glad tidings to the people that Allah will forgive their sins. To the ones who are the sinners. And Allah will accept their repentance. And Allah will pardon their sayyid. Uh, it convey it to the disbelievers. Tell them what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Kafaru. Say to them, O Muhammad. Say to them, O Muslim, to the kuffar. Iyantahu. If they stop their kufr, yughfar lahum ma qad salaf. Uh, everything which is in the past will be forgiven. Allah Jalla said also Surah Zumar, "Qul ya ibadi al-ladina asrafu ala anfusihim, la taqnatu min rahmatillah." Say, "O oh my slaves who had been doing wrong, huh? do not be in despair from the mercy of Allah. In Allah yaqfiru dunuba jamia. Allah will forgive all sins, including shirk. If you repent before you die, Allah will forgive him. In Allah yaqfiru dunuba jamia. In Allah huwa al-ghafur rahim. Allah is oft merciful, oft forgiving." Also tell them as well what Allah he said in Surah Al-Furqan. And the ones who do not call by, beside Allah another deity. And do not kill the person except with a due right. And do not fornicate. And he does this then he will find a lot of sins. إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ يُضَعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ مُهَانَ The punishment will be doubled and he will be thrown to the fire in disgrace and loss. Then he said, إِلَّا Except for the ones مَنْ تَابَ who repented. وَآمَنَ He had believed. وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا And he did a good righteous deed. فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِ بِحَسَنَاتِ Allah will swap their سَيِّئَاتِ Their sins into حَسَنَاتِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Allah is off forgiving, the oft merciful. So remind them that Islam, once you embrace it, it's going to be clearing all your sins, resetting the meter. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling this to Amr al-As. As. When Amr al-As came to give the pledge to the Prophet of Allah along with Khalid al-Walid. So Khalid al-Walid accepted the pledge, took the pledge from the Prophet, Islam. Amr, he, Prophet Sallallahu put his hand for him. Amr, he pulls the father of Abdullah. He pulls his hands away. What's wrong, Amr? He said, well, I want to have a condition before I give the pledge. What is it that all my sins to be forgiven? It looks like he'd be doing a lot of things, which is bad things. All my sins to be forgiven. He said, don't you know, Ya Amr, that Islam wipes off everything. Hajj also wipes off everything. Hijrah, migration from Kufr to Islam, wipes off everything. Subhanallah. So all of that will reset your meter. I'll tell you what. Hakib ibn Hizam, radiallahu anh, gives us something better, which is that these kuffar... When they embrace Islam, their meter reset only for the sins. As for the good deeds, that meter will not be resetted. They will get the reward for those bad and evil. So the good deeds, they used to do it in their evil time. When they're kuffar. Hakim ibn Hizami came to the Prophet Wasallam and embraced Islam. He said, Messenger of Allah. He was, by the way, when he embraced Islam, he was 70 years old. Old man. Messenger of Allah. I was in Jahiliyyah. I used to do sadaqah, give people sadaqah, you know, good money when they are poor. I used to do some sort of, you know, prayer, which I think is correct or not, but I'm doing prayer. I used to do as well, uh, attack, I used to uh, 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 free the slaves as well. Am I going to be rewarded for this or is it gone? So the Prophet said, Aslamta ala ma qad aslaft. You've embraced Islam and all of that good thing that you've done before, it will be carried along with you. Subhanallah. And that's a great thing. For the kafir, when he knows this, all the good deeds that you've done, all of it will be rewarded for you. Now, Abu Sa'id Khudri, he said, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if the person is to embrace Islam, and his Islam became good, Allah Azza wa Jal will write for every hasan he does, before his Islam, all of that will be recorded. And also all the sins will be deleted. And after that, any deed that he does from the good deeds, it will be multiplied by ten times. As for the evil deed, is only once. 
Only one going to be written. And maybe Allah will overlook it. Look at this. Best trading and profit you could do is with the Almighty Azza wa Person embraces Islam, all his sins will be resetted. All the good deeds will be recorded for him. And then when he's becoming a Muslim, does good deed now? Ten times up to seven hundred times. It will be multiplied. As if he does a, an evil deed, sin, it will be recorded one. Give a glad tiding those to, to those people who are sinners. Give them a glad tiding that Allah's forgiveness is encompassing regardless who you are, regardless what type of crime. وَلَوْ بَلَغَتْ ذُنُوبُكَ عَنَانَ السَّمَاءِ As the Prophet said, Allah said, even if your sins are to reach as the clouds of the heavens. وَمَلَعَتْ الْأَرْضِ And it's to fill the earth. But you came to Allah with forgiveness. Without shirk, Allah will give you forgiveness, the filling of the earth. So this is a promise from the Almighty Azza wa Jal. That Allah stretches his hand during the night so that the person who is a sinner during the day will be accepted in his repentance. And he will stretch his hand during the day so the sinner during the night that Allah will accept his repentance. Give them a glad tiding that any person seeks forgiveness from Allah. Allah will give him the forgiveness. He who repents to Allah, Allah will accept his repentance and Allah will not expel anybody from his mercy. Prophet ﷺ, he told us about the man who killed 99. Killed 99? Yet Allah is merciful to him. Killed 99 but he wanted to repent. So he was shown to go to a person who is monk. Monk who is just a worshipper, no knowledge. Huh? Monk is equal to a monkey. That's it. He went to him, I killed 99, can I repent? No repentance. He killed him, made him 100. But he wants to repent. So he was shown to go to another person, but he's a learned man. So he went to him, yes, there is a repentance, but you are in a bad land. You have to travel to the good land. This one will affect you. Go to the good land. So the man straight away, he took the advice, he traveled. Travel. This is the only good act that he's done now towards his repentance. He traveled. On the way, his death comes. The angels which are in charge of hell, they come and descend. And the angels who are in charge of paradise, they come. Each one is preparing, you know, for his soul. He's going to come to us. Hellfire. No, no, he's with us. Paradise. A dispute between the angels of paradise and the angels of hellfire. Each one, he says, no, he's, he's our lot. Allah, Azza wa he sends an angel. In the form of a human being. To arbitrate. So he said, okay, we will measure the land. Then measure the land. To which one is closer to? If it's the land of the land that he's heading to, the land of good people, paradise. If he's closer to the land of the one he left, which is the evil land, he is to hellfire. To the angels, will he be taken to hellfire. So, now this man, he is just about in the middle. But he's closer to the land of the evil. Okay? And only with a breath. Allah pushes him just to be. Huh? His he's actually, when they measured, only his chest was popping out. His chest was popping out. Huh? So exactly, he's exactly in the middle, but his chest popped out to be closer to the land where he wants to go. So the angels of paradise took him. Easy go religion. Give a glad tiding to these people. Give a glad tiding to these people. Subhanallah. Listen to the following hadith of the Prophet. Sallallahu this hadith, inshallah, if it doesn't make you jump out of your chair, about makes you inshallah happy. This is to show that this is an easy going religion. Maybe you never heard it before. Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ telling us about the vast forgiveness of the Almighty Azza wa Jal. Adnaba Abdun Dhamba. Prophet ﷺ said, One slave had committed a sin. He said, Oh Lord, forgive for me my sin. Allah the Almighty, the Exalted, he said, Adnaba Abdi Dhamban. My slave had committed a sin. He had known for sure that he's got a Lord which forgives the sin and also punishes for the sin. So he left him. Then the person again, he made a sin. So he said, E Rabbi, O Lord, just forgive me my sin. The Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, for Valerie, my slave, he committed a sin again. And he had known that he's got a Lord who forgives the sin. And he's asking, and he punishes for the sin as well. So again, the third time, he com commits the sin again. And he said, oh Lord, forgive for my, for my sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, my slave had committed a sin. And he knows that there's a Lord for him who forgives the sin. And he also punishes for the sin for verily. Go and do whatever you like. I have forgiven for you. 
do whatever you like because this person never stopped repenting. This is a you know, hadith, you know, it makes you sort of shake. This hadith it tells the person never stopped repenting. A person in times of weakness, he might do something haram. He repents, he might do it again. Don't say, and that's it. I've had my second chance and that's it. No, that's the shaitan winning. Repent to Allah. Allah will forgive you once and twice and three millions will ask forgiveness all the time. And if you are forgiving, asking forgiveness within the six hours, six hours after the sin, without thinking about the six hours, you just, but within the hour, and you have done a hasana as well, it will be, record, it will be wiped out. It will not even be recorded. The angel will not record it. The angel of the one who's in the left, writing the evil sins, he's holding the pin. Every time you do a sin, six hours. Six hours. If you did not repent, he will write the sin. Straight away. So, subhanallah, subhanallah. Now this person, he needs to know that I need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I need to repent within this hour. And I repent, I need to repent with as well, making a good deed. If it is uh, an open sin, people know about it, then do an open good deed. If it's a hidden sin, then do a hidden good deed. As-sirru bil-sirr wal-alanu bil-alam. Abu Sa'id, Abu Mas'ud al-Badri, radiyallahu anhu, companion. He said, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, messenger of Allah. Verily, I do not come to the Fajr prayer because so-and-so is the Imam. He makes the prayer so long. Abu Mas'ud al-Badri said, I've never seen the Prophet of Allah so angry in giving an advice to anybody. He called that man and he was giving my advice. He was so angry. Never seen him more angry than this. And he said, Ayyuhan Nas, O oh, people, Inna minkum munafireen. There are some people who make, put people off. That some of you put people off. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ أَمَّ النَّاسِ He who does lead the prayer, then let him make it light. Light prayer. فَإِنَّ مِنْ وَرَاءَهُ فُبَلِّ مِنْ وَرَاءِهِ There's some people who are behind him. The old, the young, the one who has got a need. Subhanallah. This is how the easy going. Allah Azza wa Jal. He will punish those people who are in despair from the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. The one who said, if you remember what happened to those people, the two from Bani Israel, one is a righteous man and one is a sinner and the righteous man, he kept still as a sinner. Come on, stop it, stop it. Did it once, twice, three times. Then this person who's a sinner, he told him, would you stop it as well? Allah did not send you to be over her guarding and watcher over me. Leave me with my Lord. So this man is provoked now, the righteous man. He said, by Allah, Allah will not forgive for you. And another narration said, Allah will not make him to enter paradise. Allah will make him to die. And he will summon them. And Allah is telling, them, telling us what's going to happen. And he will summon them. And he says to the one who is righteous, ah, are you the one who is in charge of what is in my hand? I mean, that means with you, the check, paradise, check, to hellfire. Are you the one who's holding that? Are you going to know what I'm going to be doing? For you to go go hell. For the person who is a sinner, go through my mercy to paradise. Abu Huraira, he said, this righteous man, he said a word which had ruined his life and ruined his akhirah, his hereafter. What is the word? By Allah, Allah will not forgive you. Why Allah? Allah will not put you in paradise. Subhanallah. Ya khwani, this is why the Prophet Sallam would always object on those people who are repelling other people and putting people off and not giving them a, 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 a chance to repent to Allah but actually make them to be despair. No way Allah will forgive you. Subhanallah, just like that monk, you remember? That man killed him and made him a hundred. And also give a glad tidings to the general people. Don't just tell them, you know, look at the Muslim, what's happening to them. You're going to be doomed. Uh, Allah, is, 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 Allah is leaving us. Sheikh, Allah, you are going to give us a triumph. Khabab al-Arat, in the time of the Mecca phase, when the companions were under persecution, Khabab al-Arat came to the Prophet of Allah and he was shading himself in the Kaaba. And he said, Messenger of Allah, Can't you see what we are in? Are you going to ask for victory for us? Are you going to help us, champion us? Make a dua for us. So the Prophet of Allah sat down and he said, Verily, the ones who were before you, the ones who were before you, they used to be the, the mu'mins before you, before you came. They used to be tried and tested regarding their religion. One of them will be brought and will be put in a hole. And then a saw will come into the middle of his head, cut into halves. And then an iron cone will take the flesh away from his bones. 
And yet this will not take him away from his religion. For verily Allah will complete this deen until the person ride from Yemen to Hadramaut, well known two places, full of bandits. He will not fear no one except for Allah and the wolf on his sheep. Allah and the wolf, the wolf because he doesn't care whether you are a, a good city or a got tyrant leader or a good leader. He will eat the sheep. Huh? He will fear the sheep on your sheep, the, fear the wolf on his sheep, and you only fear Allah Azza wa Jal. And that took place. That took place. So you give the people as well a glimpse. Don't say the Muslims are doomed. The Muslims, no. Allah's Messenger said, Inna Allah al ard, wa inna mulki ma minha. Allah had folded for me the earth in front of me, east and west. I could see all the way to the east, far east, all the way to the far west. Huh? And my dominion, which is Ummah Muhammad, will reach as far as I have seen, as far as I've seen in the east and in the west. Now you look, China, Islam, Morocco, West Islam. Look at that. Fulfilled to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna hadha al-amr la yablughanna. This matter, this Islam will go and reach as far as the day and the night will reach. That means the North Pole and the South Pole. It will reach it. Whether it is the one who's going to get triumphed or the one who's going to be humiliated. Is the one who is Islam. Enters Islam, he gets the triumph. The humiliation for the person who denies it and enters Kufr. Give them that glad tiding. Then the last admonishing of the Prophet ﷺ, he said, to Mu'adh ibn Jabal and Abu Musa al-Ash'ari قال تطاوعا ولا تختلفا Cooperate with one another. Do not split. Do not diverge. Do not turn your back to each other. For verily the whole good is always lies in when you are having a mutual sort of uh, agreement with your brother. You don't differ from him. Okay, if the difference is the, the difference which is not going to be leading to hatred, no problem. And then you negotiate, no problem. But the difference that's going to get led you to have a grudge on all of this, haram. Look at Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu in the time of the khilaf of Uthman radiallahu anhu. Uthman is making the hajj and he is now leading in Mina the prayer of Dhuhr and Asr. And it is the ritual uh, uh, prayer of Dhuhr and Asr for the person in hajj when he's in Mina, said the haram, is two raka'ah Dhuhr, two raka'ah Asr. But Uthman led the people in four raka'ah. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud behind him. And he knows it's two rakah. But he completed with him four rakah. And he was asked. He said, Wallahi, I prayed behind the Prophet of Allah. And I prayed behind Abu Bakr. And I prayed behind Umar ibn Khattab. All of them prayed two rakah. In this case. But, and I wish that my four rakah is two rakah. But difference, differing, divergence is all of it evil. So why did he pray four rakah? Not to make the split between the um. Khalas, the Khalifa decided this. I pray behind him what he wants. So Allah Azza wa Jalla said, شَاءَ رَبُّكَ If your Lord wishes, لَجَعَلَ النَّاسَ أُمَّةً وَعِدَ It could have been the people, all of them one go, one thing, one set, one people, one heart. وَلَا يَزَلُونَ مُخْتَلِفِينَ إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكَ But they will still differ from one another, except whom Allah have mercy upon. Whom Allah's mercy is upon? The one who are united. The one who are not differing. Huh? The ones who are united. يَا أَيُّوَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ You, you believe, fear Allah as you should be feared, by not accepting a state of Islam with complete submission to Allah. وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And hold on to the rope of Allah altogether and do not split. وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا And remember the day when you were enemies and Allah Jalla, He put affection between you and you made, you made you brothers, إِخْوَانًا And then you have turned into brothers by the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Jalla, He said, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا Also don't be like the ones who had split وَاخْتَلَفُوا and differed مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ After the clear proofs had been given to them وَأُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Those are the ones who are going to receive a severe punishment. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and this ayah tells us that we should cooperate with another. We should not, uh, we should not split. وَيَا أَيُّوَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ uh, Sorry. وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ and obey Allah and His Messenger. وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ Do not dispute with each other and then you will be quarreling with one another and then your power will dissipate. Why? Because you have quarreled with each other. You should be together. And the shaitan, he had 
given up to make you worship the idols, but he does not give up in putting enmity between the brothers. Aisa al-Shaytan wa nyabudahu al-Musallun fi jazirat al-Arab, walakin bit-tahrishi baynahum. He was successful in putting hatred among them. Look what happens when the companions had differed, when they were 50 archers on top of the mountains. They differed with each other when they saw their brethren are collecting the wubuti and the Prophet of Allah said, said to them, don't leave that position, whether we are winning or losing. So when they saw the brothers collecting the wubuti, let's go and share. Some of them said, no, it's not correct. Prophet of Allah said, such and such. no, it's not correct. It is our brothers now, khalas, has finished the war. It was a dispute. What happened? The winning side now, it became the kuffar instead of the Muslim. The battle of Uhud, the beginning was for the Muslim, then later on it was for the kuffar. So the dua, the call is for the sake of Allah. They should unite with one another. They should not split. And the people look at them as examples. So if you have difference between you and the other da'iyah, uh, this should not be uh, over the surface. It should be below. It should be treated you, you and him if you are on one call, on one da'wah, on one manhaj. But to show that you are you know, uh, with each other uh, having grudge on all of this. Don't, don't blame the people that are doing the same thing like you because you are a role model for them. Assalamu subhanahu wa ta'ala li wa lakum al-thabata ala deeni wa saluhu azza wa jal an yanfa'ana mimma qad sami'na wa saluhu azza wa jal an yaj'alana mimma yasami'u al-qawla fi attabi'u ahsana wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.